This is my favorite murder mystery visual novel of all time. Kara no Shota combines this haunting, atmospheric aesthetic where women are crucified in accordance to a local cult legend with its Japanese noir investigation narrative. This isn't just about finding the serial murder, but rather the madness that comes from obsessions and paranoia. And it's really good. Meet Detective Tokusaka Reiji. He's tasked with investigating a series of murders in a 1950s Tokyo. The victim being young women with their wombs torn up and stuffed with clay dolls. And at the center of this mystery is a depressed man who failed to off himself. An individual with one very complicated history. It's not exactly an appealing side quest for Reiji compared to his ongoing desperate attempts to find a young girl with no arms or legs, but this one's very interesting in its own right too. Thanks to Shirivune for providing me a review copy for me to check out to see how deep the conspiracies go and the horrors I was about to witness. This series made me conditioned to fear for these young schoolgirls, given how brutally murdered I was expecting them to end up. Limbs ripped from their bodies, their corpses being displayed as ghastly art pieces. Thankfully, this isn't the case. Instead, the strike zone was changed to older women, which was even worse for my heart. I swear to God, my heart rate goes up by 10 whenever this screen fades to black. Because as soon as it goes into this red splash screen, all I could have done was pray that their death makes Reiji one step closer to solving the mystery. Karna Shoju really loves to make you attach to its characters before crushing your heart as it shows these characters crucified in sickly display. The presentation is fantastic but it feels terrible in the moment. Kar no Shoujo 2 is actually tamer than its predecessor when it comes to the murders. No artistic, gory depictions of young girl corpses like I said before, but instead it chooses to show itself as a symbolic representation of a cultish obsession. Now don't get me wrong, I only said that the corpses were more tolerable. I never said that this visual novel wasn't grim and cruel. There's only one warning I have, and it's of a particular 18 plus scene that'll make you reel in disgust by the abusive treatment of the female character depicted. These killings aren't random whimsical acts. For the killer, it's all about sending a message. And it sure doesn't help when these killings the villagers claim are victims of the curse of Lord Hina. Hmm, sounds oddly familiar to another murder mystery visual novel that takes place in another backwater isolated village. Well, compared to that one, this story actually plays it straight as an investigative detective murder mystery. What's nice about Kara no Shoujo as a mystery is that the reader is always one step ahead of Reiji. The story often switches perspectives, from Reiji to Masaki to Yukiko to even the murderer themselves. As a result, we have more knowledge to figure out who the culprit is while still getting enjoyment from how Reiji and Masaki deduces the mystery. I enjoyed reading the script. As an amateur mystery reader myself, I found it easy to notice key clues and ominous foreshadowing. And even then, I found myself surprised by some of the reveals later on. Really, it's important as a reader to figure out what elements your murder mystery is dealing with. Cult religions, body doubles, dual personalities, tragic incest, unreliable narration. So many different possible factors could be in play. There's so much complexity to this mystery that it even gives Reiji a couple of headaches. In addition to the current troubles he already has, both serious and non-serious. Reiji's my absolute favorite. He's really damn good at his job, and I love reading through his mindset as he pieces together the case and delivers the truth. He's also very funny too. The ongoing trend of him reacting to every single woman messing with him is a gift that keeps giving. And that's in spite of having a metaphorical punching bag right next to him. As much as Masaki operates as Reiji's assistant, he effectively serves as the errand boy for the shit that Reiji doesn't want to deal with, leading him to react in very exasperated ways. Something I found very entertaining. A very strange Sherlock Watson dynamic, but very fun to watch. The script adds flavor to all these comedic moments too. Reiji's her thoughts playing up his retorts, and Masaki responding with his own baffled comments. Funny enough, the both of them are very similar in how they have to deal with the woman gravitating around them, both old and young. And in an equally cruel way too, they also share similarities in how most of the women around them ends up turning into a corpse in the end. This time, it's Masaki. Reiji's just slightly ahead of him.
Masaki's role in the story is crucial, obviously, but I would like to highlight how the story does a great job in showing the emotional beatings inflicted on this poor man. Remember, he's not an experienced detective like Reiji. Masaki is an average man, and that actually helps put into perspective how hopeless this entire situation feels for him. He's got no power or status on his own, he's got no confidence or assertiveness, and any investigation he attempts to do is blocked or dismissed. Each factor further compounds each other, only making his situation even worse and being framed for murder sure ain't helping his case. His physical and mental state is so bad, it's no wonder he committed that desperate act at the beginning of the story. The only thing he can do is keep persevering along with Reiji to help find the serial murder behind the killings. And even then, he's put through the goddamn ringer with every new murder and revelation. Masaki is one gripping dual protagonist, and seeing his entire arc play out further makes me appreciate the emotional depth and distraught of his character and really, Kara no Shoujo as a whole. Not the one any man aspires to be, but it sure is interesting to watch as a reader. Believe me, you might think that the romance slice of life in the beginning is boring, but you're sure as hell gonna lock in when people start dying, only to find out that you actually got really invested somewhere along the way. The story itself is split between two time periods, one taking place in the distant past in the isolated town of Hitogata, and the present day of a post-war 1950s Tokyo. The beginning starts off in the former, but as you might expect, the events that happened from back then are largely connected to the present day murders. It's a very slow starter for sure, but it's crucial to understand the dynamics, relationships, and the current status quo. After all, the incidents that happened there shows the traumas our characters gained back then, the reasons why they turned into the individuals they are today. The environment itself sure doesn't help either. The isolated village of Hirogata is one very restrained, deeply hidden, stubbornly traditional enigma. The story's first half shows these defining characteristics of the town, and nothing initially appears too out of place, but upon further investigation of the villagers only reveals how Hiragata is one extremely tough place to get to the bottom of. It's like the village of Hinamizawa from Higurashi, but actually used deliberately. Really makes you wonder what history and motivations lie at the core of these beliefs of the villagers, and that itself is a mystery that needs to be solved. It's a case that turns out to be thoroughly annoying for Reiji, but brutally heartbreaking for Masaki. As for Reiji himself, he's still dealing with the ongoing case that is the disappearance of Toko, and his obsession with trying to find her only complicates his judgment when dealing with the current mystery. After all, why deal with this case when Toko's situation becomes more critical the more time goes on? The world moves and life continues, but once again, Reiji's stuck in the same lamenting and yet subconsciously frantic attitude as he was in the first game, when the murderer who killed his fiance was still out on the streets. Only, it's even worse now. Kara no Shoujo 2 has a secondary title, The Shell, Part 2, Purgatorio. And that last word couldn't be any more perfect to describe this game. In comparison to the first installment, Kara no Shoujo 2 instead has one central mystery, one that gets more complicated and complex the deeper the investigation goes. Someone who may seem unrelated actually turns out to be connected to one very specific detail that's necessary for the case. And this happens more often than you think. At first, it's easy to understand, and then 10 hours later, the relationship and family charts become this complicated mess. And yet, it's absolutely amazing how everything manages to piece itself together while still leaving room for that brutal, bittersweet sequel hook. A huge improvement from the first game, as I found the separate investigations from Karuna Shoujo 1 underdeveloped. But that's not the only thing, as the gameplay also feels a lot more streamlined. It's exactly similar to the first one. Over the course of the story, you're allowed to investigate the murders, and the game will present you questions to answer and evidence to present. The location selection also returns, allowing you to visit certain people for conversations. I found that the freedom of choosing locations didn't harm my progress of the story. Bad endings mostly come from choosing the wrong decisions. That said, here are two very important pieces of advice. You must visit Yukiko three times before January 9th, otherwise you get locked into a bad ending. And 
If you really want that 100% CG completion, just keep clicking that bath towel. I hate it too, but the VN CG completionist in me compels me to do so. Speaking of, I encourage you to play without a guide first, and then look up a walkthrough to unlock the rest of the bad endings before doing the normal obsession and true endings in that order. This game requires you to play through the story again in your second playthrough in order to get those endings. This means starting a brand new playthrough. You'll get to see the differences very quickly quickly. On your second playthrough, you'll also get additional choices to pick from, and these ones matter in terms of unlocking specific, uh, spicy scenes with the female cast. Now, while I do understand a bit of the reasoning for these scenes, overall, I still don't think that Karuna Shoujo really needs it. I see it as fan service gratification, really. A fade to black, passive mention of the act would accomplish the same narrative merit. But on the other hand, Sugina Miki's all work is really good. <laughs> However, I still get an uncomfortable feeling whenever I see Reiji casually hooking up with the younger girls, which I still don't understand at all, because there's been an obvious clear winner for this game in the last. I mean, come on. I gave Karo no Shoujo less than pleasant thoughts in my original review, but with Karo no Shoujo 2, I can definitely say it goes leagues beyond the first game for me. A huge improvement. It pretty much refined and perfected everything I liked about 1. That said, I do think there's a couple of slight pitfalls. Yukiko isn't a strong central character compared to Toko, and the schoolgirl segments felt almost too disjointed from the main story. But those complaints were side effects from being too busy from being hooked on the main plot. I've never been so invested in a murder mystery in a long while. At the latter half of the story, I spent the last two, three sessions reading five hours worth of story, only to be stopped by the fact that I needed to go to bed and work the next day. And when a story has you constantly reading, you know for a fact that you're enjoying the hell out of it. Karuna Shoujo 2 is one intricate mystery, spanning time periods, complicated family charts, and schoolgirl hijinks. It's dark, depressing, bittersweet, and tragic, but it's one damn good story with great characters. As for that true ending, I can only pray Reiji finds a way out of the misery he's stuck in. 5 out of 5 with a seal of recommendation. I would also like to thank everyone on Patreon for supporting me in covering visual novels. You guys are fantastic, and if you would like to be a part of that effort, please consider subscribing. Now, if you're curious in another murder mystery visual novel, I recommend checking this one out or this one for a general recommendation. I'm looking forward to reading Karuna Shoujo 3, because without it, my heart hurts every single time I open this game now.